right. Yeah. We'll see if we get through them. You remember how to do this? It's not hi, it's hello. You can say whatever you want to say. Hi and hello are the same thing. Okay. <laughs> All right. Everybody. Hi, everybody. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is... Travis. Yeah. Jansen. Yeah. And? And Jerry Scarlatta. You don't. That's fine. <laughs> Travis Jansen. This is from... episode 27, buddy. Ups. Okay. Here we go. Back to Write you. that down. Yeah. that. Right. Are you ready? I'm ready if you are. You sure? Yes, ma'am. Once you clap. Why? Because you got so much... good last time. Because I have to stand up to do it hard. Enough. Why? Okay. Can I just snap my fingers? If you want to start your own thing, you can do that. <laughs> All right. Hi, everybody. This is Travis Jansen, and this is episode 27 of Thrive TV. Today, we're back with um, the question and answer session. Uh, this is the second one that we've had um, where I'll be asking Jerry some exercise and nutrition questions posed by clients and friends. You'll Red. be answering the nutrition questions. No, you're in the hot seat, not me. <laughs> you get some of them. Okay, All so right. you ready? I'm ready if you are. Question number one is from client Denise, who trains here. Uh, she wants to know, and I'm kind of interested in this also. Okay. Uh, what would you do differently? More arm press questions? No. No. Okay. No, she, yeah. All right. What do you do differently in planning a, a workout or training session for a 25-year-old versus a 50-year-old who basically has the same goal? For example, if they want to lose weight. So, same goal, different age. Right. Different lot of things. Different lot of things, yes. So that's that's the variable there. So we know we know that they're one's fifty and one's twenty five. Okay. Mm -hmm. So obviously the fifty year old has more wear and tear. Mm -hmm. I mean, just age does that to you. Um, I have to know if they have any asymmetries. I have to know how they're going to move. I have to know if they're mobile through their spine, hips, so on and so forth. I have to know all those things. However, assuming that they're a healthy 50-year-old that doesn't have too many limitations and that they've been relatively active before, mm -hmm. and assuming the 25-year-old is pretty much the same, mm -hmm. uh, not a whole lot other than um, maybe they won't progress as fast. Okay. I'm thinking, do you think metabolically they're the same hormonal-wise? No. no, I don't think so at all. And do you not feel that that plays a role in, especially if somebody, especially if you have a 50 year old as opposed to a 25 year old who's wanting to lose weight. Mm -hmm. My mind says the 25 year old's going to do that better. Let's mm -hmm. say female. Okay. Okay. Two females. The yep. 25 year old's going to do that probably better okay. based on the fact that they're young and okay. the, their hormones are not you know, fading as from the aging process. Right. Not yet. Not well, yet. at 25, it's pretty not close, but right. not quite yet. Right. So you think that that, how would, how would your workout, do you do anything different with a workout program for that? So the exercises might be different because again, I would do something, I would do something a little more quote unquote risky with a 25 year old than I would with a 50 year old. And again, it goes back to wear and tear and risk mm -hmm. to benefit. So mm -hmm. what what risk does it what risk is it to the person that it is? So if it's a fifty year old and you're talking about doing heavy barbell deadlifts with them, then maybe they can do it, but they might take a while to get there. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's a twenty five year old, they maybe they can do it again, you don't really know, but because of their because they don't have as much wear and tear and probably as many restrictions, then they have a better likelihood of getting there and getting there faster. Right. Okay. Okay. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Mm -hmm. As far as metabolically, metabolic, metabolically and anabolically goes, mm -hmm. hormones and mm -hmm. your metabolism. Uh, again, assuming they were both somewhat active, <laughs> the biggest variables would be weight. Okay. Uh, starting and moving forward. So. 
The biggest variable would be weight starting and moving forward, especially moving forward. So you can probably, I would probably start them at around the same weight, mm -hmm. and then the 25 year old would progress a lot faster. Okay. Um, not that not a not that a 50 year old couldn't progress at the same stopping point, if that makes sense. Stopping point, because mm -hmm. in my mind there is no stopping point; it just slows down a lot at a certain point. Um, you've seen that over the last mm -hmm. couple of years, especially that your deadlift is not your deadlift went up really quick and then it just mm -hmm. kind of went like bing, 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 really slow mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so once you get close to that stopping point i think the 25 year old gets there faster mm -hmm. and then the 50 year old just takes a longer time to get there mm -hmm. if they if they can at all and there may again there may be some things like there's just more it's a little more complicated with they with a 50 year old because of wear and tear okay and that's the biggest issue like you know what what what's their starting point what's point a point a is different for both people mm -hmm. right exactly yeah and and age plays a factor but in my mind if you're relatively active and you can both move the same mm -hmm. and like if 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 you're moving the same and mm -hmm. you've been active the, man, the the same amount uh of time like the last two years then there's not a whole lot of difference so so do you feel that um that somebody who's older has a different um you know what am i trying to say here so, so do you ever feel that there comes a point where it just becomes maintenance and you can't make changes um based on working out that you just that you kind of hit and by changes it? you mean strength and hypertrophy right mm -hmm. yes do you think strength, yes. power hypertrophy right. speed whatever you want so call do it. you just think that finally yeah, you just kind of flatline and you're just going to stay there. No, I don't think so at all because you're all, your body's always trying to get weaker. No matter what, your body is always trying to get weaker. So if you just sat and did nothing, number one, you would die a lot quicker. Number two, you would have no muscle and you'd be weak. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it would, wouldn't take very long, a couple okay. months. I mean, it would it'd be very quick. Oh, definitely. For, for everybody. I don't care mm -hmm. who you are. Right. Uh, it, would be, it would be quick. So your body's always trying to revert back. Mm -hmm. So anytime that you're working out and maintaining mm -hmm. a strength level, mm -hmm. you're getting stronger because your body's trying to get weaker. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. And I also believe that even then you can still always get somewhat stronger. Now, if you're a power lifter and you're already deadlifting a thousand pounds, can I think, do I think when you're 70 years old, you can get stronger from that? No, I don't think so. But that's, that's like, that's the exception. That's not okay. the rule. The yeah. rule is the average person that lifts weights at a relatively, you know, not, not powerlifting pace, you mm -hmm. can, you can continue to get stronger mm -hmm. and you can continue to have muscular change as mm -hmm. you get older. Okay. Well, in a nutshell, never give up. Yeah. I mean, it, it really is. And I think that that's a lot of people just have trouble because, and I, <laughs> Part of the article that I wrote this morning was about being patient and, and allowing the process to come to you. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people get in trouble because they just don't allow the process to happen. Mm -hmm. They want the process to happen now. They don't want it to happen over time. Mm -hmm. So if, if this is something that you want to do, then it's something that has to happen over time. Like it's just. And it needs consistency. That's the way that it mm -hmm. is. Yeah. Yeah. So that is one, one thing I learned from weight training all these years is patience is mm -hmm. you know you just keep doing it and be patient and mm -hmm. it will it will happen yeah. yeah and you're the perfect well because you came Trevis trained with someone else before me for five four or five years mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. she already told me yesterday that my four-year anniversary is <laughs> is coming up so i'm getting ready to get <laughs> kicked to the curb so I, I might as well enjoy the next six months. <laughs> so she, she trained with someone for about four years before me. Okay. And you were a skinny, I mean, you were 120 something pounds, 125 mm -hmm. pounds, mm -hmm. not a whole lot of muscle, uh, but skinny. I mean, you had yeah. lost a hundred pounds. Right. So right. yeah, you had, you had accomplished a ton. Right. Um, however, you were hoping for different things. Yeah. So, and well, at those that point, just, right, weren't coming. just weren't coming. Right. And and that it took changing mm -hmm. uh, and um, doing a whole different program essentially. Yeah. That yeah. you know, in in three and a half years later, mm -hmm. you know, it's paid off. 
and benefits, you know, I'm stronger now than I was then. And I thought, you know, I was pretty strong back then, but yeah. definitely, um, just a different, the different programming really showed me that I wasn't, mm -hmm. um, I wasn't strong on both sides of my body. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, it took a long time to put on what little muscle I have put on, but I have put on muscle <laughs> yeah. and I have gotten much stronger. Yeah. So I don't plan on quitting anytime soon. Yeah. So. I think this is a perfect segue to Vicky's question. Okay. Vicky's another client just asked, why can't I just do more reps with less weight to lose weight? Oh yeah. Because mm -hmm. that's where I came from. That is where you came from. Right. So, <clears throat> there are a couple of pathways. There's, there's a, there's a lot going on in this question. <laughs> <laughs> number one, number one, if your goal is to lose weight, lose, lose fat. So let me, nope. If your goal is to lose weight, if your goal is to lose weight, no matter what your goal is, nutrition, that's number one. Mm -hmm. So with that aside, if your nutrition is on point, if your nutrition is on point and you're doing that correctly, and you're talking about doing more reps, less weight versus doing uh, less reps and more weight. Now, yes, there is going to be a point of diminishing returns when it comes to losing weight and doing more, losing weight and doing more weight resistance training. So if your goal is to lose weight and you're doing like sets of three to five, then no, that's not going to be very effective. It's not going to be very efficient. You know, it's, that's, that's like your strength training range. That's what it is. Three to five, uh, three to five reps. However, once you get to about eight, 10, 12 reps, um, that's really your sweet spot. And the reason, the reason that that's the range that we like to work in is because number one, muscle burns more than fat. So you want to be able to put on muscle as your weight training and I think women have a hard time with that because they don't want to be big and muscly. However, <laughs> it's just near, it's nearly impossible. I mean, it's you look at happen. yeah, you look at a woman bodybuilder and that's very unrealistic because they're on steroids. Mm -hmm. It's just that simple. So, women don't produce enough testosterone in order to get big and muscly, big jawline. They just it just doesn't happen. So, a lot of women have trouble with that because of that, but you want to put on muscle as your weight training because muscle muscle burns did I say muscle burns more than fat? That doesn't make any sense. Muscle, muscle burns more calories as oh, at, yeah. while you're at rest. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you want to put on muscle when you're getting into like 15, 18, 20, 25 reps, and you're using really light weight. Uh, yes, are you going to rev your metabolism up a little more than if you're doing eight to twelve? Maybe not significantly, and I'm not even convinced that it's going to be a whole lot because you're going to have to use really light weight. With eight to twelve, you can use a medium to heavy weight, and your metabolism is gonna shoot through the roof just like it would with twenty to twenty-five reps. Um, however, your body cannot efficiently put on put on muscle in that rep range. You'll burn calories, and that's great. But when you're talking about again long term, you want muscle. Your body's trying to get it off of you, so that eight to twelve rep range with a medium slash heavy weight is the range that you want to work in so that you're putting on muscle, maintaining slash putting on muscle as you get older because your body's trying to strip it away. Okay. Um, do you think that um, cardio plays a role in dropping fat at some point? That you need extra cardio or more cardio or... That's another... Going back to the 25 to 50 year old, and I'm not even saying like age difference, but that's a very individual thing as well. So number one, nutrition on point. If we're assuming that that's correct, if mm -hmm. your nutrition's on point, um, it depends on how hard your workouts are. If you're weight training two days a week, then yeah, you're going to need, like if that's all the weight training you can actually do, you need more, you're, you're going to need to do something else. Okay. You're going to need cardio, whether that's going out and running sprints, running hills. Um, if you like to run, like just go out and jog, that's okay. Uh, then you're getting into a whole nother like muscle building issue. Um, but if you're weight training, three, if you're weight training four days a week, then you don't need more, although you could probably do more, but it would, should be a little 
lower intensity because you're probably doing high intensity stuff during your weight training. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? I just, like does lifting lifting weights in and of itself is yes really cardio. Is, yeah. Right. So right. people mistake cardio as something that you get on you get on this moving apparatus and like. A treadmill, Ooh. like that's what they define. That's what most people define right. cardio as, which it is cardio. Don't get me wrong, but like, go lift weights and your heart rate's gonna get up. Yeah, tell me about right? it. Right. <laughs> yeah. So I felt that last night. <laughs> cardio, like cardi cardiovascular. Mm -hmm. It's it's cardio work. Anytime your heart rate goes up, anytime mm -hmm. your heart rate goes up, it's cardio. Mm -hmm. But it's how do you do it? Mm -hmm. You can lift weights and make it really easy, get five minutes rest in between sets, or you can just continue to move like we do here. Mm -hmm. so, I, I agree with that. I mean, you know what I mean? This is a cardio yes. workout when you lift weights yeah. in this programming. Right. When you're out of breath and your heart's pounding. And, right. Yeah, and there's a reason we do it that mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. We could very easily do like arm day today. You want to do mm -hmm. arms today? Yeah. I know Denise wants to. <laughs> <laughs> well, we need to work on our arms. Yeah. yeah sure. You boys need to work on your legs, but that's a whole another discussion, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. It you ready right. for another question? I am. All right. So let's just finish. Let's just go right into uh, the rest of Vicky's question. Okay. Okay. She wants to know, why does my coconut oil have to be cold pressed? Mm -hmm. And why is butter okay when we are told it's not by the media? The world. The world. Right. Um, let's see how much you've listened. How much I've listened? Travis is saying that because I should have learned a lot of this from her. Yeah, evidently he doesn't <laughs> listen to what I say. I listen. So, so coconut oil and being cold pressed, and that can go for. I'm going to throw this in there: extra virgin olive oil versus also. versus regular olive oil. Mm -hmm. Olive oil, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, why would your coconut oil and your olive oil need to be cold pressed? Oh, okay. Both of them. Both of them. Because they both need to be cold pressed. <laughs> okay. Okay. So. I'm wait. <laughs> you don't know? <laughs> no, I don't. Oh, okay. So I, I admit, about oxidation of fat when heat is yep. applied. Uh -huh. Does that help? Ring that a bell with you? To a minimal amount, it does. Okay. So yes, every fat has its heating point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Once you get to that heating point, it starts to oxidize whenever you ingest that fat, whenever it's it's big. at that it's rancid, it goes right. rancid, and then your mm -hmm. body uh, it's metabolizing your body and your body creates free radicals. Right. And which it's is not what good. causes mm -hmm. inf inflammation, Cancer, disease, so on that. and so forth. Right. So I'm assuming Treatise is trying what try Treatise is trying to allude to is that the cold press process mm -hmm. does not apply heat to the product. So, so that is not rancid, whatever. So it's right. Packaged. So right, because they coconut oil comes in refined, expeller pressed, mm -hmm. and cold pressed. Mm -hmm. And in our country, mm -hmm. the standards are a little bit different than over in Europe, where right. they're better over right. there. So cold pressed coconut oil has had ne should have had no heat put onto it. And if Applied you look at the if you look at the colors, you can it's tell the pressed. difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So cold press means that they've not used heat to extract the oil out of the coconut. Uh -huh. So refined is the worst. You want to completely right, stay away from that. Right, because it's been refined. Because and you can tell. So cold pressed yeah. coconut oil. Mm -hmm. What color is it? Because I know that's what you eat. What color is it? White. Mm -hmm. It's snowy white. White. Right. White. White. Refined coconut like oil is off color. Grayish. Mm -hmm. White. It's kind of like a beigey yeah. looking. Um, so that has had significant heat mm -hmm. it's put on it for the extraction process. Mm -hmm. Expeller pressed has had a little bit of heat. It, it's, it's snowy white too, mm -hmm. but the difference between expeller pressed and, and cold pressed is the taste. Mm -hmm. um, they say that if you don't like that coconut sweet flavor that I can't taste it myself, mm -hmm. but my husband has told me he can tell when I've used coconut oil. It's good. Right. Just cases. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. So if they are against that, they don't like their eggs tasting a little sweet mm -hmm. or whatever, then you can use expeller pressed coconut oil. the flavor. The flavor, right. That mm -hmm. doesn't taste as coconut coconutty Nutty. as, if that's a word, yeah. as cold pressed. Can't so today. same thing with olive oil. Mm -hmm. Needs to be cold pressed. Mm-hmm. 
to be healthy so that it's not and beneficial. Mm -hmm. It hasn't had any Been heat heated. applied mm -hmm. to it. And you know, that's why you, you want cold pressed and there it's easier and easier to find mm -hmm. in the grocery store now. So make mm -hmm. sure that your coconut oil is snowy white in appearance and not beige in color. Mm -hmm. And make sure that your your olive oil is in a dark bottle dark because bottle. light will oxidize damage. it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So and the other thing that I would throw out there is the difference between the two when it comes to cooking. Because mm -hmm. you don't want to use extra virgin olive oil if you're going to cook at a higher heat mm -hmm. because that heat mm -hmm. over a period of time will oxidize that olive mm -hmm. oil. So you're better off to use coconut oil mm -hmm. at, for higher heat cooking and save olive oil for like salad dressings and light sauteing mm -hmm. and where you're not going to have it heat on up. heat very Too much. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Does that make right. sense? Perfect. That's can't good believe stuff. you tricked me into answering that question for you. You know how to work it. All right. <laughs> butter. Butter. Let's put some butter on it. Let's well, put some so butter what do, on what it. do you think about butter? Okay. So uh, this this answer has a couple layers as well. So I'll try and keep mine simple, and then I'm sure you'll have some to add on to this. Mm. Uh, butter goes back to or people not eating butter and having either margarine or just you know whatever. Can't believe it's not butter. Whatever it is, instead goes back to the whole Antel Keys. Mm -hmm. um, low fat, high carb, eighties years. Well, that's where that's where it came out. But I I think that it really boomed in the 80s, in the yeah. early eighties, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, and that mindset is still like just lurking around, and it's slowly slowly creeping back in that it's okay to have fats. Mm -hmm. um, butter is one of those things that is. It depends on the person because butter comes from a cow and some people can't have dairy products. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that I would say and I'll throw out there is that if you can get grass fed butter, mm -hmm. you're going to have a much, number one, it's much richer, uh, much better taste and number two, you're going to get much more nutrients out of it. If you just look at the color, the grass fed butter mm -hmm. is much richer. Yeah. Right? And, right. And Regular the, butter is the, just like light yellow. Right. The very fat light. composition is, is different, different in grass-fed butter. Mm -hmm. It's um, the same as grass-fed um, beef, beef as far as mm -hmm. the good fats that you need to take in for your body. Mm -hmm. So yeah, grass-fed, um, you know, is it the way I go? Mm -hmm. Is it absolutely 100% necessary? Um, no, just, I mean, why would you want to eat margarine that mm -hmm. is I was once told, you know, I could take a bucket of white house paint, white mm -hmm. paint, color it yellow, put some chemicals in it to make it taste good, mm -hmm. and you would eat it. And you wouldn't know any yeah. different. Yeah. Well, that essentially is what, what margarine, margarine is. is. Hmm. So why would you want to eat something that's artificial yeah. when, um, you know, butter in moderation now that you can't be like <laughs> right you can't have a stick of butter a day no, you can't eat a stick of butter a day but right. you know add some grass fed butter to your vegetables yep it makes them taste better and mm. if that's one thing you have to do to be able to take in more mm. vegetables then you're not then do it mm -hmm. you know just don't put gobs on it yep. just put a little you know yep. small amount so um but grass fed is is mm. better when it comes to butter now, just to be sure, we don't mean that they feed the grass to the butter. No. <laughs> right. Because there has been that confusion, which is understandable. <laughs> but grass-fed butter from grass-fed cows. Yes. And yes. what's the name of the brand that we use? A Kerrygold is Kerrygold. one that's readily found out in the grocery stores now. It's kind of funny. Um, when, you first, when we first started looking for it, I mean, we had to get it from, like, Whole Foods. Yep. And one of... Um, our clients would yeah. stop there and pick up butter for us. But now, I mean, you can find it. Now, you can't... It's funny. I don't know why they do this, but the grocery stores don't put it back by regular butter. Butter, yeah. It's up where the... Uh, up by the deli yeah. where the specialty cheeses are. Yeah. So, um, I, I don't know why yeah. that is. But that's where you will find that. And, you know, the other thing is, is you're seeing more grass-fed cheeses out there, which is the same principle. Mm -hmm. um, grass-fed cheese is better for you right. than regular cheese. Right. So, yeah. So, have some grass-fed butter and eat your vegetables. Okay? Like Good. It. Good answer. 
Okay, so we have another question from um, a friend, Ryan, and he would like to know if you, if you know you have a healthy gut, are probiotics beneficial for weight loss? All right, I'm gonna take I'm gonna I'm gonna take the question as it is, okay, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna answer it that way. Okay, and then I'm, again, I'm sure you'll have more say on top no, of it, and that's not. fine. I'm gonna take the question as it is. So again, assuming you have a healthy gut, assuming that you're, assuming that you're fine, that your belly's fine, um, will probiotics help you lose weight? Uh, no, it's gonna be very minimal, at best, um, if at all. If you have a healthy gut, which most of us don't, uh, even if you do eat healthy, but if you have a healthy gut, then that's not what's holding you back from losing weight. Not that you shouldn't take a probiotic, uh, but it's not going to be beneficial for that purpose because it just doesn't have any, at that point, if you're health, again, if your gut's healthy, there's not really a whole lot of change going on that the probiotic is going to help with to get you down more more down the fat loss path. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. and, you know. It's, there's just not a whole lot more to it other than it's just not going to do a whole lot if you have a healthy gut. Okay. Now that's what we talked about mm -hmm. is if you have a healthy gut and a lot of people, most people, if you ask, I don't know, most I mean, people, the right. majority, they would probably tell you, yeah, my bell, my bell is fine. Well, how, how, and my question is, is how would you know that you have mm -hmm. a healthy gut? Because do you know if uh, you have a healthy gut? No, I know that I don't. Right, and I know mine's not healthy right now either. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, based on the fact that you, um, you know, have symptoms like indigestion, mm -hmm. heartburn, mm -hmm. uh, irritable bowel um, syndrome, mm -hmm. those kind of things, we've all taken antibiotics in mm -hmm. our lifetime. Antibiotics mess up your gut flora. Mm -hmm. um, so, you want to just kind of say briefly some of the things that can help. But I feel like I don't. I feel like you just have to do like a daily, like a maintenance, mm -hmm. to just try to ensure that your gut mm -hmm. is healthy. Right. So, so obviously, there's there's things that you can do, and and we can talk about this now. Like mm -hmm. number one, varying your diet, mm -hmm. uh, varying your nutrition, not eating the same thing over and over again. I'm completely like that's what I do. Me that's too. what I do. Eat the mm -hmm. same thing over and over again. It's easy. It's convenient. Um, however, some variation in there, like I, I try and rotate my vegetables every week, mm -hmm. um, try and add some different carbohydrates, some different fruits, some different something every mm -hmm. week. So, um, I've tried to get a lot better with that over the last, um, over the last couple months, especially, uh, because whenever you just eat the same thing over and over again, your body just knows how to digest it. Like it doesn't have to produce anything different. It just digests it, and yeah, I right. got it. And I, I think that you you can create deficiencies mm. oh, in yes. That's minerals good point. and vitamins by yep. just eating the same foods all the time. Mm -hmm. Because you know, an apple doesn't contain the same thing that a banana does. Mm -hmm. um, so I think you know it's a good point to eat a wide variety. Mm -hmm of fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're getting enough fiber mm -hmm. in um, on a daily basis. And you know, if you, you know, I personally take a probiotic mm -hmm. every morning. Um, and I always, I have for about the past year and a half. But you know, you just have to, you know, we're exposed to so many things. All the, everything's antibacterial mm -hmm. now. And, and um, you know, even down to things you clean your house with. I think that, you know, creating this world of of you know having to have everything, <laughs> everything sterile, sterile yeah. you know it's okay i was reading you know reading you know with it's it's a good thing sometimes to get some dirt on your yep. carrots yeah. and, and from your area right. that you live in because mm -hmm. these are the t these are the bacteria mm -hmm. that we're exposed to so don't like peel your carrots mm -hmm. because you know you can see the dirt down dirt, in the little right. creases and if they've if they've come from a farm a local farmer right. that's beneficial for you to take in mm -hmm. that type of bacteria to help your gut and your immune system. I don't think people realize how closely linked your gut is to your mm. immune system. Yeah. It is very closely mm. linked together. So I think, you know, we have to we have to do something to 
protect ourselves and mm-hmm. our guts because I, I, you know, your gut is really important for a lot of uh, different things. There's a lot of research going on in this area right now, and um, some people want to say that if your gut's not right, then your weight's not going to be right mm-hmm. um, because you're not going to be absorbing the nutrients from your food and mm-hmm. um, so on and so forth. So, you know, I, I personally think that everyone should take a probiotic whether you want to, but it's not going to. If you're not eating the right foods, you're not going to lose weight if that's what your goal is. Mm-hmm. Okay, you have to put your food together right, mm-hmm. and in the right portion sizes, um, and the probiotics just a, a plus um, benefit to mm-hmm. help your overall health, not you know to lose weight. Right. Okay. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah, we need to do a segment on. Yeah, I think so. On that. That's good. Down the road. Okay, one more question. One more. Let's do it. It's I from guess me. This is from you. I this is from me. Yeah. Um, she has I, notes down. Yeah. <laughs> I want to know. So, um, talk about signs of overtraining, how to prevent it, and if you find that you're having symptoms of overtraining, how you correct that without losing all of your gains. <laughs> so, overtraining. Whenever you get into a resistance training or whatever kind of training program, it can be training for a marathon, it can be training for a triathlon, it can be just training to train. So whatever kind of training program it is, like number one, you should you should make progress and you should push yourself. And that's called overreaching. So overreaching is pushing yourself a little harder every week or every 10 days or every two weeks okay. so that you get faster or you get stronger or you get more powerful. Okay, okay. does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So that's the point. You want to put weight on the bar. You want to pick up heavier dumbbells. You want to do one or two more reps when you can. You want to run a little faster, a little longer when you can. That's the point. That's the point of overreaching. That's how you get stronger and faster. And then, and then there's the point of diminishing returns when you get way over there and you're doing it way too much or too long. And how would you know that? So you know that when you start like you will literally start to get sick. See you, Becky. We answered your questions. Good. Perfect. I should be Victoria on there. Though. Victoria, sorry, yeah. Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. Um. So how would I know if I was ever training? What would I feel or? So a couple things will happen. Number one, if it's just minimal at best, then um, you're you'll plateau and I wouldn't even even say that you have to be overtraining to do that like if you're just doing the same rep scheme and the same types of weights and things like that then you'll plateau but the first thing you'll do is you'll plateau and not a whole lot of movement will go on right Mm -hmm. Um, so you had I don't a month ago or so that you just randomly took a couple days off and you came back and you felt great Mm -hmm. okay Uh, and you weren't necessarily overtrained but that's something that you need to do anyway, just to rest. Mm-hmm. Whether if you train on a regular basis, you just need you just need rest. It just needs needs to happen. So the first thing that you'll do is plateau, and then if you just continue to try and push through it, you'll actually mm-hmm. get sick. Mm-hmm. Like your body will start to shut down, you'll get fatigued, then your weights will actually start to go down, or your speed will go down, or whatever it is you're trying to accomplish, like that'll mm-hmm. start to decrease. Okay. okay. And then like you're actually rock bottom. Your body like your body will actually shut down and start to get literally sick not just like you won't be able to right work out right exactly so uh, I don't think a ton of people get quite to that point however I do think a lot of people uh, I do think a lot of people don't let themselves rest enough and that's what our seminar is gonna kind of be about is rest and recovery and warming up and things Mm -hmm. like that but Mm -hmm. um, so what do you think I just want your opinion what what for somebody who trains you around and just mm -hmm. an average person Mm -hmm. who you say one of your clients here, mm-hmm. what is ideally, how many rest breaks should someone take in a year? Mm-hmm. One, two, um, you know, so when, I go, when I go on vacation, I never take the whole, I mean, I never sure. just sit there and do nothing. Right, but you don't weight train. Right. Right? Well, yeah, I don't uh, weight train. You might go to the gym and like push the, right, but push the not, machines around a little bit, but same. you're not doing what you're doing here. You go run on the beach or mm-hmm. whatever it is that you mm-hmm. do. Now... When I say rest, I don't mean like actually stop and don't do anything. Okay. Now you can if you want, but then it's it might, it's going to be a little harder, harder to, to get back, back in. Mm-hmm. Yes, because it only takes seventy two hours for your body to start moving backwards. Mm-hmm. Seventy two hours mm-hmm. for of rest, your body starts to go backwards. Um, <clears throat> so you don't have to stop, 
active rest is the best way to do it if you're going to rest. Okay. Now, if you're talking a 12-month cycle, then if you're taking, I mean, two a year, mm -hmm. I would say at minimum, and that two a year can be, again, it doesn't have to be completely off. Like, if you like to lift weights, if you, if you want two rest weeks, mm -hmm. just cut your weights in half and do the same, like, okay. do some basic human movements. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, still do the movements, but just don't lift heavy for that time frame. Yeah. Um, or if you do take take time off of weights or running or whatever it is, do some active rest. Go ride a bike. Go, mm -hmm. if you're on vacation, run up and down the beach a little bit. Uh, like I said, ride a bike. Go, I don't, whatever else walk. you can do. Yeah, oh, walk. Plenty of walking. Fun. Definitely. Just keep moving. Keep moving. Because I don't, I don't think it's good to sit. I think, no. I, just from my experience... If I go and I sit, even yep. if I sit, you know, take three days off and just sit, mm -hmm. it's really hard to start moving back out of that, at least at my age, because things are like clunky and stuck. And, <laughs> yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I yeah. mean, because my joints are used to constantly, yep. you know, doing something. Yep. So I think that that's, that's where maybe people, people who take breaks off, they have a hard time yep. getting back. Getting back. Because they're probably not doing much. Right. Yes. Right. So active rest is definitely key when you're talking about taking a break. Now, and the, the other thing, and most people, like, the average person doesn't have time to think about this kind of stuff, which is why, like, you hire a personal trainer. People ask you all the time, why do you continue to pay somebody? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the other thing is there has to be some progression and some reasoning to your training. Like, it can't, again, it can't just be continue to try and get like continue to try and run harder or continue to try and run longer or continue to try and push more weight forever like mm -hmm. it just can't be that because there will be that plateau and then there will be that point where your body gets sick and just doesn't do much right. so there has to be some sort of cycling some sort of some sort of um Medium, periodization hard, that you go up easy. each week every two weeks every month and you're changing hey what's up you're changing things as you go along. So that's mm -hmm. what people don't have a hard time understanding and why plateaus happen is that you're just doing the same thing all the time and there's no like there's no periodization or there's no movement to your program. Right. Well, I think your body gets used to anything you do. Right. Over a period of time and it right. it, it, it it's always seeking balance. So yeah. it just gets used to it and yeah. that's it. So just a couple of times a year. Yeah, I would say I would say minimum a couple times a year. I wouldn't say much more than like than like four or five times a year. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> then you're talking about every three months, which it really just depends on how hard you train. It really just depends on who you are. Mm -hmm. That's another thing. Like if you're training a couple of days a week and that's really all you do, then you probably don't need any time off. Okay. Uh, but if you're training hard four days a week or five days a week, then you know three weeks off a year is not a bad thing. It's just Something you your body do, needs you it. Yeah, I mean, you'd be surprised on the progress that you would make whenever you come back. Yeah. Okay. But good job. Good question. Good job. Good question. Thank you. You're welcome. I love these. Can <laughs> we just you? do them all the time? You're always in the hot seat. I'm always in the hot seat. Do you know how much you actually talked this time? And you didn't have your notes everywhere. And... I know. I love this. I'm so more laid back. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so more laid back. Because you feel like you're in. Yeah. You're in I'm in the driver's yeah. seat. Yes. All right. Well, All how right. do we sign off? We say thank you. Oh, you clapped too soon. <laughs> oh, I did. Okay. So <laughs> you can find Jerry at. Uh, if you have any questions, if you like any, if you have any questions that you'd like to answer, hit us up on Twitter at the Thrive Pack, or you can send Treves some questions. T R E V E S at thriveforstrength.com, or is that it? That's probably good. Is that good? Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. <laughs> but, all right. Thank you guys for listening. Have we answered your questions? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was distracted. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>